guys. Come on in. Um, got a really good show for tonight. Um, we've been working last few weeks. We've worked on uh, almost kind of a theme going. And we did uh, unicorns. Uh, and we showed how to do the horse's head and, of course, the horn. And a paint job on it. And it came out really good. A lot of you guys emailed me and told me how fond you were of horses and everything. And uh, some of you didn't know, but our show's been on the air three years. And we've done uh, carousel horses before and uh, did a good job on it, too. Should have been there. And we've also done the weather vane with horses. What we're going to do this week something a little bit different so we get to show off two things at once, two birds for the price of one. All right. If you look over here to my left, you'll see we have this lovely pot and we have some horses on it. We have two. I was going to put three, but I ran out of time. So that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to make a pot. We're going to put some horses on it. Now, I've been doing the research here, reading about horses, and they're interesting animals, of course. Some of you guys probably know a great deal more than I do. But I always like to do research first so I kind of know what I'm talking about so I won't be like a politician. All right. I'm going to come over here to the board. Now, the name of this show, in case you'll call and say, Joe, I didn't get to see all the show. You know, I want to get a copy of a tape or something. This is called the Horse Pot 1. And probably we're going to do two shows because one is going to take me to make the pot. And on the second show, we'll show you how to sculpt and put the horse on it. All right. Now, the first thing we have to do, you veterans, you already know this. But in order to make a pot, we have to start at the beginning. Now, always, and I've got kind of a system here, being the old school teacher that I was, uh, we go one, two, three, because so many of my students are right brain dominant, and they always want to jump ahead, and they're trying to put the candle on the cake before we bake it. You know, what's next, what's next? They're kind of anxious. They're visual thinkers. So we always set this up one, two, three, and we always start at one. So... Number one is we're going to roll out uh, a slab of clay, like a big amoeba or perhaps a pizza would be a term you all more familiar with. Then we're going to take a pre-existing Tupperware bowl. And the bowl, of course, is already uh, the shape that we want. All right, bowl. A little lip on the bottom there. And we are going to take the clay and line the inside of the bowl. Now, when you take two bowls and you put them together, bowl, bowl, put them together, you have the pot shape much like I have to my left. Then you can decorate it like, for instance, here behind me, uh, here is a small dragon pot where we've made a uh, dragon before. We just took the pot and we put a dragon on, uh, head on one end and uh, the dragon's tail on the other and made a dragon pot down below me over here. I doubt you guys can see it, but this is one of my favorites and one of my most requested shows is the green man on a pot. And then right here, my working tool, the good old hardworking turtle, this was a pot, and we just put legs on it, and we put a turtle head. So the pots are very practical. They're good to put uh, plants in, dry arrangements, tools. And then, of course, if you like something like turtles or green men or dragons or horses or lions, tigers, bears, oh my, okay, sorry, been silly. If there's something that you like, you can do a sculpture on your pot because, as the show says, it's uh, pottery, sculpture and painting and I hope we get to do all three this show enough talking let's be rocking and rolling all right now I started ha ha by doing my research to learn about the muscles and the heads and the shanks and the fetlocks and everything and I even went past that and I learned about the skeletal systems and the muscle systems and how the le legs went and so forth but I can't decorate the cake until I build the cake so we're going to make a pot first now uh, I've got a, a nice bunch of people, and I really appreciate the suggestions y'all make with the emails and the phone calls and everything. And uh, a lot of potters call in because uh, they do pots, and they want to decorate their pots also, and they ask me more technical questions, whereas some of the young viewers, they ask me more questions about the bad jokes I told or something. All right. Technically, for those that are technical, I've got a cutting wire here. This is the easiest way to uh, cut clay, path of leaf resistance. I've got my good old 25 pound block of white earthenware. This is a low fire white clay, meaning that it fires uh, white, just as white as snow. As a matter of fact, up here, here's a product that is out of the kiln and I have not painted or glazed or stained yet and this clay fires just as white as this little fish that you see right here. 
So after we uh, make the project and it dries, when it comes out of the kiln, it is literally that white, just as pure as my conscience, as it were. Now I'm gonna got a limited working space here. So I take this slab of clay and I take uh, this rolling pin and I press it out. Now, some of the anal retentive perfectionists, I'm not one of those, will sometimes lay two pieces of wood on both sides of the clay here, like this, and then the uh, rolling pin will go back and forth on those two pieces of wood. Um, Yardsticks are pretty good about that, or you can cut your own the way I've done before. And that way it'll guarantee the wood is exactly the right thickness, so it's not thick in one place and thin in another. Uh, that's an excellent thing to do, but to me, it's kind of like putting training wheels on a bicycle. Once you've ridden a while, you don't need the training wheels. But the process on it works like this. You lay two uh, sticks of consistent sizes, and then the uh, rolling pin would roll on two of these, and that would guarantee a very similar thickness uh, to your clay. Now, I've done this several times in the course of the years, but I always think the person tuning in, it may be the very first time you've ever seen my show, and uh, you didn't know the basics. So I'm not taking it for granted that you people already know all of this because that's one of the things that makes you angry. One of my favorite uh, learning experiences, my wife and I both taught school, <laughs> school for many years. It shows, I know. And uh, one day we were carpooling and I went to pick her up and a good friend of hers that was uh, an English teacher that I knew quite well came out. It had been a long day at school and she had a very difficult day, I could tell by her body language. I'm a sculptor. I notice these things, right? Attention to body language, especially this lady's body language. She was very angry. She walked up to the car. She saw me sitting there, and she just needed somebody to kind of unload on. And I said, hello, and I called her by name. I said, what's the problem? She said, I've been teaching conjugation all day long. And I said, okay. And she said, and when my seventh period class walked in the door, they still didn't know it. Now, I don't know if you find that as enlightening as I do, but, and I don't know if she was being sincere or not, but the point was she had been telling people all day long about conjugation, so she would thought that maybe they should know about it by now. But the problem was when the other children came in seventh period, it was the first time they'd heard it, all right? The other children had left that she'd been talking to for hours. So when you guys view in, I just assume it's the first time you've ever been in, and I'm not just going to pretend you already know something. All right. I've laid out the slab pretty close like I've shown you on the board. Now, you guys, if you're new, you're going to love this trick. I said you're going to love this trick. Reach down below me here where I'm so organized, and I have a very inexpensive, uh, consistent size Tupperware bowl. Now, of course, you would need two bowls exactly the same, and that would create this perfect pot kind of like this. But sometimes I get creative. Everybody's creative. And uh, I'll use a different shape pot so it won't be a perfect sphere. Or I'll put a uh, band around it so it's more of an oblong situation like that. Okay? So just thought I'd tell you about that. Now, you're going to like this. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to press because the bottom of my pot, it came from the factory with this nice circle here. So I'm going to press it there and it makes a perfect little impression. Now I'm going to take a safe cutting tool and sometimes when I'm going out in the artist in residence program I will use a popsicle stick because it's very safe. It doesn't have any kind of edges and we don't want any uh, students to hurt themselves. There was uh, a bad joke once. I know a lot of bad jokes. And it said, what was the last thing the idiot said before the ambulance arrived? And the answer was, hey, watch this. And so when you start using dangerous tools, you know, hey, watch this, ouch, I've stuck myself. But I make sure that all the tools that I use are politically correct and they have no point and no edge, like a conversation with a politician. No point, no edge. Here we go. Now, if I were to lay the clay into this bowl, I'm afraid it would stick, okay? So what we traditionally do 
is I'll take a plastic bag. This is the same bag like my clay comes in, waste not, won't not. And I'm going to lay the bag in there to uh, keep the clay from sticking to the pot. So I just take a bag and I cut off the bottom, cut off the bottom, and I cut down the edge and I turn this bag into a plastic sheet. Ta-da! Ta-da! Okay, I'm sorry. Quite often, somebody asks, where did you get these plastic sheets? Yeah, it was a bag two seconds ago. All right. Lay the sheet there. This is like um, your sock uh, in your boot. Keeps your foot from sticking to it. Okay. Now, luckily, there's a fine layer of dust on the table here, and it keeps this clay from sticking to the table. I, I've told this story before, but it, it stuck in my mind. I was teaching this yuppie class, and uh, these ladies were learning and watching, and they went home to practice, and one of the women came back to class the next week, and she said, you know, when I laid that clay on my dining table at home and I rolled it out, it stuck to the dining table, and Consuela, my domestic, took her all day to get the one off the table. I'm thinking, this lady put mud on this expensive dining table. I went, duh. All right, this table here has a fine layer, I kid you not, of dust on it. See that white dust there? That's, that's clay dust and it keeps the clay from sticking. If this were perfectly clean, I kid you not, the clay would stick. Uh, it's like oil on a machine part. The fine dust is very important. Uh, a guy told me a joke once, and he said, uh, a lady told me once that um, dust is an accent for fine furniture. And we import ours, and my wife just puts it all in furniture because it, it accents fine furniture. All right. I have put the um, center right in the bottom. A lot of people have a little trouble figuring this out at first. Now, I'm not going to make this little card. It's really easy. It's called a rainbow arch. All right, rainbow. Mm. So here on this slab, I'm going to cut an arch. My son has taken physics and higher math in school. There's probably a name for this arch. The correct name and the country boy name. A while ago when I was looking up the names of the uh, horses, there was a brief horse. I didn't know this until I looked it up. There was a brief horse called, get ready for this, I'm kidding you not, the Florida Cracker. And I'm just cracking up. And it was called that because it was uh, the trotting horse in Florida and they would crack the whip. Right? So they called it the Florida Cracker. Love that title. All right. Uh, water, good old H2O here, works like glue uh, when you go to put two pieces of clay together. Now, in an ideal world, I would use slip, which is a combination of water and clay. Now, I hope you guys can see this, and I hope I do it well. Oh, y'all don't have smell-o-vision. You got television. I just smelt this. This is an old uh, detergent spray stuff. I just got a whiff of this lemony sweetness. It smelt nice. Or it could be the cameraman's cologne. I don't know. Here we go. I'm going to take this arch, and I'm going to sit it down in there. I'm going to turn to good old camera one over here. You guys can see this. <laughs> I did a good job. I hope you guys can see how good this fits. Now, what I got fussed about last time was I used a tool to push this clay up into the um, wall so I didn't crap any air beside it, and I used a tool called a potter's rib. This is a standard tool that any clay supply house would have, any potter has. It's a really cool tool. Switch your finger like this, work it. It's got a hole here where you can get a good grip on it. The edges are beveled, so they slide right off the clay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet these walls. I'm going to take my potter's rib, and I'm going to press all. Oh, man, and the water makes it go so good. I'm going to go down here to the bottom. I hope you guys can see this. I'm looking to find out which one it is. And I have connected and I've made half the pot already. All right? 
and it feels good. I got to make sure that I connect that bottom circle in and hey, that is working really, really good. I'm going to spin it around so y'all can see it. This is the half that's done. Now, next part's a little bit tricky. We can do it. If, it's <laughs> a big old if, if this were perfect, it would just work out perfect. I'm going to miss being perfect by just a little bit, which is the story of my life. All right. I am going to cut another rainbow arch. And this time, and this is the question I get asked most often. All right. What I'm going to try to do is take this arch and put it over here on the other half, right? But I don't want to butt it together. I want to overlap it a little bit. So if I came prepared, uh -huh, I did. I'm going to take my fork and I'm going to score the edges. So when those two edges come together, they're going to lock right in and I'm going to press them together. All right. One, two, three. Got to do things in order. There's my water. So far, is it working good? You know what it's like? Everybody looking at you, make a mistake, or ha ha, Joe's a big hot dang, a greasy bear. I think I did it. Now, I've overlapped like I'm supposed to, so I'm going to take my dull knife and I'm going to cut off some of the excess. I just need to overlap a little bit, like when you're overlapping shingles or something. And I'm going to cut off this excess. I can visually see, I don't need much, like welding, just enough. Now, Water works like glue in this situation. God, it smells so nice. I like that. Okay. Uh, sometimes the old slip in my uh, studio doesn't smell good because it's old and it's stagnant and all the yuppies that are taking lessons there and the other artists complain the bad smell, but this smells good. All right, here we go. My potter's rib, you may not can tell it, but my fingers are in this hole and that helps me to hold on to it. Now, please note, I'm stroking in an upward direction. May not seem like much, but these little things make a difference. All right. Uh, I'm here in Mecklenburg County, and there's a lot of gravity here in Mecklenburg County. Okay, we're famous for our gravity. And it will take the clay toward the bottom. So I'm stroking it mostly toward the top because... And this is a, another question I get a lot. At the top of the pot here, I want the clay to come up just a little bit past the edge, and then I'll cut it off. And so I'd rather it be a little bit too big than a little bit too small. I think it's kind of like the edges around a pie when they trim it, so you overlap just a little bit. Now, one of the few sins... Uh, that I'm guilty of committing because I'm a regenerated Baptist and I, I've tried to cut down on the number of sins I commit. One of the um, few sins I commit is redundancy. I say the same thing over and over again. But as I've mentioned, um, I am an ex-school teacher and so we quite often had to repeat ourselves. All right. I'm... Oh, perfect, perfecto. You go, Joe Rock. Love you, boy. Ow, hot now. Okay. I'm cutting this top edge, and as you guys can see, I did my math, and it's working out just fine. Now, I have a perfect bowl. I couldn't throw it any better on the wheel. I'm going to tap it down once to just make sure if there's any air bubbles, we kind of burp it out. Tap it down once. Now, in an ideal, I feel like one of those cooking shows, I'm going to put it aside and just let it simmer. All right. In an ideal world, I would make two of these, all right? Bottom, top. And uh, right now, the clay is very flexible, as you can see. And you veterans know, you clay working people, when the clay begins to get stiff, it's called leather hard, okay? So that's when it'll stand like a bar of soap. But, always a thinking. I've made a couple up at home the day before. I came prepared, girlfriend. All right. And here's a pair that I had made at my studio yesterday. Aha! Ready to rock and roll. And these are leather hard, all right? There's one. Here's the other. Now, when they get in this stage, what I do is I score this top edge. 
Score means to scratch up. Put grooves in it. Groovy kind of guy. Okay. Grooving that bad boy up. Now, ideally, ideally, I would have some really thick slip. Very, very similar to a brick mason putting mortar on a brick when he sticks one brick to another. I was uh, teaching a young child in my studio last week, and the grandmother came by, and I was teaching the child to uh, throw on the wheel. You know, when you make pots and it spins around? Mm -hmm. And the child, which a lot of young people throw on the wheel for the first time, they overreact, and they go too fast, and they kind of jerk on it. I said, no, nah, the wheel is doing most of the work. It's doing the spinning. You just need to control it like driving a car. You don't jerk it back and forth. You just kind of slowly keep it between the ditches. And the grandmother uh, thought she should correct me, that's their job, and she said, this child didn't know how to drive a car. Well, it was the best reference because they had seen a car being driven before. So don't jerk it nice and smooth. So a lot of times I try to use references that everybody can relate to, and uh, I may use one that I'm familiar with and you're not. Now, I've, luckily I've got some slip here on my uh, potter's rib, and I'm going to put it, uh, okay, I'm trying to find a reference everybody can relate to. All right, I'm going to hit both ends of the scale. This is like putting... <laughs> I'm a visual thinker. All right, I, I get to see the joke before I tell it. This is like putting peanut butter on the bread before you put the jelly. And for you older viewers, it's like putting denture cream on your dentures. Okay, I covered everybody. We all got visuals, right? Okay, here we go. Now, if I did this right... If I did this right, this is the tricky part. And if I muck this up, all of you guys are watching. Ha ha, Joe's a big doofus. He's trying to tell us how to do this. He made a mistake. If I do this right, I'm going to be able to, in one swift, smooth move, flip this bad boy over and line up these edges perfectly. That's my plan. If I muck up halfway, the pot's going to drop out like juggling eggs, and I drop one, and it's going to slide sideways, and I'm going to be like a big goofy guy here. All right. You guys want to place a bet whether this works out good or not? Now is the time. Place your bets. Place your bets. I'm going to spin the wheel. Here I go. Feels good. One smooth stroke. <laughs> okay. I have done this successfully before. Okay. Not recently. Ha! I did it. Okay. Why am I always the most surprised person in the room this works? Now, a trick here is to fill the edges of your pot and make sure that everything's lined up good. It feels good. All right? Now, if I've done this well, <clears throat> you can tell the tension. If I've done this well, I should be able to just lift this bad boy off. Hot dang. That's strike one. If I've done this well, I should be able to remember the plastic back. Peel that off. And we have a perfect pot. Now, I have some, haha, I have some tools, I said. I'm going around and make sure the edge is all nicely lined up. Oh, that's close. That's so close. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to use this excess clay here. I'm going to roll a coil. And I go around this outside edge. I work it in. I told you guys last time, I've just, after 20 years, got a new toolbox. And I haven't put all the tools in it from the old box. And I had a fisherman say once, says, one thing is a fishing box, one thing is a tackle box, and uh, there's a difference. A fishing box is one you've been using for 20 years, and you have everything in it that you're supposed to have in it. All right. I'm going to, there's a tool that would do this better than my hand. I've used it before, and I don't have it with me right this minute. All right. I think I've rolled a coil. Now, I'm doing this on the outside. It's almost like a gasket, and I'll do it again on the inside. Okay. It's not ideal, but it is real. I do have this tool. Oh, uh, by the way, a little helpful hint for you professionals. On these tools that you're touching the clay with, 
if you put a little oil on them every now and then, it keeps the uh, clay from sticking and it helps to keep them clean. Most potters are not clean freaks or anything, but uh, it's a little helpful hint. All right, now I told you this week we'd make the pot and next week I'm gonna put horses on it. We only have a couple of minutes left, so let's find out if I did this right or if I'm a big dummy. Some of you already have opinions on this subject. Okay, hear that? This is leather hard. This is one of those moves that gotta be smooth. Smooth Joe Rock. Over. The plastic keeps it from sticking. Pops right off. The plastic comes off. <laughs> we got it. Now, I'm gonna use my paddle. Get this all lined up, curved off. Now you can see how I'm touching this, it's holding together, it's not drying, I'm breaking like an eggshell. Quite often I use the term that you get a feel for it. Same thing like when you're working on a wheel. This is a neat tool here, a friend of mine that works wood made it up, it's like a big giant watermelon seed. It's not professional, it's just another artist friend of mine uh, made it and I traded him something for it. Probably a bad pot, okay. We only have a very short amount of time left, but as you can see, we've managed to make a pot. Now you guys tune in next week, and we're going to sculpt horses around this thing, okay? Now, the show is called uh, Claywright Workshop, your congenial host, Joe Rock, and under that name it says uh, Sculpture pottery and painting. So in this particular episode called, as you saw from my sign, horse pots, this episode we have done uh, pottery, reverse order, then we're going to do the sculpture of a horse on it, then we're going to paint it. So we're going to be able to cover all three. I like, as an artist and as a guy, I like working with my hands and I like working with simple tools. I am so pleased with this. Now, intentionally, I let one get a little harder than the other, and when that happens, because one's a day or two older, a few hours older, it was closer to the fan, I always put the driest edge on the bottom. If you make a mistake, and I've made every mistake, that's how I can tell you, if you make a mistake, and this is too wet when you try to take it out, it literally will kind of collapse on you. If it's too dry, when it is what we call bone dry, uh, it will, you won't be able to get the uh, sculpture to stick to it. So there is a certain moisture content. And I remember uh, a scene from the uh, movie about the history of Mark Twain when they were teaching him to be a riverboat pilot. And they taught him that you're not supposed to drive that riverboat in shallow water, all right? And he said, how can you tell? He said, you just have to know, all right? I know, okay. I'll see you guys next time. Tune in. We're going to put horses on this, okay? Till next time, you got to have art.